Hello everyone, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I would like to share with you a technique for texturing items. I thought it nice to start with an example perhaps of a stick shift, um, the handle for a stick shift. So I started out with a sketch like this. Here's a 300 millimeters, 20 millimeters offset. There's a nice little spline. <clears throat> And to that sketch, I added another sketch <clears throat> that was simply an ellipse. And with this ellipse, I controlled it with a uh, tangent line so I can make it bigger or smaller. -ish. And then what I did was I made a swept freeform feature. So um, I, did, I went to sweep, swept. And I selected uh, the ellipse as a section. I selected this single curve as a drive curve like this. I said uh, add new guide curve and I selected this one. There I had my uh, swept freeform feature. Okay. Then I did a little datum plane that hovered above this whole system. And I made a sketch on that datum plane. This is a very simple sketch. It's just an arc, an arc, a line, a line, and fillets. Okay. And then finally, I just projected that sketch down onto the surface. I won't show you that because most of you did that before. And I'm going to hide these entities. Oops, Control B. Hide those entities. And then I did a divide face. And that is the little face that I would like to texture. I don't need these curves anymore. That, I don't need any of them really. I'm going to do that and... Okay, so now, as you can see, I have a stick shift and I want to tex texture these surfaces. Great. Now the texture command is very powerful. A little bit funny because when you say menu, edit, facet body, texture, here it is. You get your texture editor. And uh, the first thing I want to do <clears throat> is select the face upon which I would like the texture. So I would uh, filter for face and select that like that. Um, it needs an initial curve, like a curve that kind of sets the direction, the basic direction. And then you get this editor right here. And you say, okay. So now that you've selected the piece of uh, face that you want to texture, you can go into 3D texture. Now, 3D texture, it's funny because you've got to browse for textures. You can scale them, you can pattern them. If you make monochrome, it um, turns up the black and turns down the white, so it just makes a um, makes something that um, is, is more of a 2D. Uh, you can set the uh, maximum offset. In this case, it's going to be three millimeters. And uh, in order to find the texture, though, um, there is a nice place you can go, and that is uh, texture generator onlinecom And here is where you can find all kinds of textures. So you can brick, you can start messing around with it in terms of its rotation. There, now it's a herringbone. <laughs> And uh, once you're done, uh, you can download it as a PNG. I'm going to click on download, and I'm going to call this brick. That yeah, brick. And um, save. Okay, so now that I've got my texture loaded in a place, I can go to this little button right here, and I can pick up the brick. Okay, so there's the brick. Uh, and now um, I can uh, now I can apply it. Let's do show result and let's see what it does. 
It gives you uh, unable to preserve topology. Faces may be merged. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's your brick texture. It looks pretty cool. Um, I can shrink it. I can scale it, etc. Uh, but now I'm going to say okay. So I kind of like that. I'm going to finish. And then what NX seems to do, if I control B this, I can basically hide what's underneath the whole body in itself. Okay? So terrific. So that's how it goes. Now if I say control H, you'll see that that texture is actually, uh, actually solid. And so if you 3D print this, you will get the actual three-dimensional texture. Um, that's super powerful. And now, so that I make this a little bit more exciting, I'm going to bring back this set of curves. Projected curves, I probably should have just selected it in the menu. But I'm going to use that to subdivide the face again. Okay, so now that I've divided this little piece of face here, I want to put a texture, not a texture, I want to put a image on it. So I'm going to hide all of this stuff here. Okay. And I want this to be all black. So going to select just that as a face. I'm going to turn that to be black. That. Um, well, let's just choose another color. At top a little. Let's call it blue. At least you can see the color. Black is just too stark. There we go. That's nice. And now finally, I'm going to go to the render package, render. I'm going to do assign visual materials. I'm going to filter for faces. I'm going to go into leathers. I'm going to pick a leather rough. And uh, nice. And um, I think I'd like it a little coarser. So I'm going to say edit materials. I need texture space. Here it is, texture, texture space. And right now it's at 250. You can see it's got a bit of a grain to it, and I'm going to make it 600. 100, 600. There, so you can see it's leatherier, leatherier. There we go. So there is my finished product. I've got my stick shift handle. I've got my bit of texture on it. I didn't texture this side. I do have leather on there. There you go. There's a way to provide very intricate patterns on a face. The other method would be algorithmic modeling. You could do something like this with algorithmic modeling, but you don't have quite the choice. So, again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Share this little video with others, and if you would, hit the Design Visionaries website, and you can get books that show you how to do a lot of the techniques that I demonstrate. It's really important to us uh, to share what we know with the user community. Thanks again.